weapon mask. The man responsible for this whole renewal. 65 seconds on the clock. This final, nothing like the one that he beat with 22 seconds left. He's gonna need to be almost perfect here. Here he goes. Matt. Taking his timer on this first cycle. And he's actually made up a second already on the Trillo. Again, you want to build up some time so that way if you do make some mistakes, you have time in hand. You really can't afford too many though. is about a second ahead of the pace that you need to be at and now makes that jump up and he went really quick there he's about two seconds ahead Matt is making all these jumps he's ahead of Petrillo's pace by a long way but he needs to continue to make all these jumps and he looks in a great rhythm 20 seconds to go Matt coming up on it Matt once he makes his jump he'll have one cycle to go 13 seconds left only a few jumps left. 10 seconds left. He's on the final ledge. He's got it back off the wall. No. What's he going to do here? He spring jumps. Four seconds. Can he get to the end? Weapon Matt. He's done it. Unbelievable. I cannot believe it. Weapon Matt. His first time attempting the final. No one had attempted it before this tournament. And Weapon Matt has done it again. He is a two-time... Irish Warrior Champion. Hello everyone, it is that time once again. Welcome to Tournament 12 of Irish Warrior and what an exciting day it is. Following the incredible success of the last tournament in Weapon Mat's second total victory, it's time to kick off Era 3. What's going to happen today for our 50 competitors? I'd say, let's find out right about now. The first stage has a little bit of the old and uh, definitely some new stuff to keep our competitors on their toes. It all begins with the Step Pillar, uh, based off the infamous Step Pillar from Ninja Warrior of Roblox, shout out Bubba Ace. Uh, the jumps get progressively harder, and then obviously you jump to the pole at the end to then get to the finishing platform. Not an easy first obstacle. And then you got the booby trap. This brand new obstacle, you have to keep your momentum up and bounce side to side across the four sets of bouncers and get to the other side. Then the third obstacle is the Diamondback. This obstacle debuted in Tournament 10 as the sixth obstacle, got brought forward to the fourth obstacle last time, and is now the third. The only thing changed is the dismount is slightly farther. And then you have the Baby Dragon as the fourth obstacle. This is basically a one-track drag glider. Competitors will have to jump off the tram, get a very big jump to land on the bar, and then keep their composure as the bar will continue to pick up speed as it rolls down. They'll have to make the dismount and move on to the new Donut Dash. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Those donuts will pivot on you. You just got to keep your momentum up and make the jumps that get progressively harder. And then you're on to the Pipe Vault, the last new obstacle on this stage. Competitors are going to need a massive jump to land on that first pipe that will move between the wedges and then you're gonna have to time your jump to the second pole to then get onto the platform and attempt the escape wall which has been made slightly tougher since it debuted in the last tournament and from there you only have one obstacle to go and it's the swivel swing competitors will actually have to jump off a super tramp now to get onto the first set otherwise it's the same as it has been but other than a instead of a rock you're landing on you're landing on the finishing platform of the stage two minutes on the clock for our competitors 50 will step up to bat today and the first of them is daddy cheese's girlfriend um when cheese was about ready to do his run uh his girlfriend was also there and uh she wanted to have a go so here we go first competitor of the new era makes the first jump now taking her time going for the second one and no just barely didn't get her angle right um, and yeah, you can see the new uh, timer that I, I built. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fun. All right, number two, B. Thatcher. Uh, now would be a good time to point out that all of the newcomers from now on, regardless of their skill, will be randomized. My goodness, he did not know where he was going. That was a poor performance. The Halo. At least he was in the right direction. If we had the last two competitors, uh, we had the first guy. Uh, Distance, the second guy's accuracy, we would have made the first jump there, but 
now we actually have a newcomer with some promise. This is Crimson Gold 360. Uh, noteworthy. He doesn't do a whole lot of courses, but best known for some Spartan Sasuke success. Look at him just dash through the first obstacle. He's the first competitor to try the booby trap. Moving nicely. Once you get to that fourth one, it's not too hard, but you just kind of got to try and keep your momentum up and get to that fourth one. Once you get to that fourth one, as long as you don't do anything stupid, you should be home free. That's what Crimson Gulch did, and he's now taking on the Diamondback. Makes that first jump. The second jump, but gets a safe jump, but he is there. And takes a little second there before going for the dismount. This final is pretty lenient, so you can take your time here. Crimson Gulch going for the baby dragon. And no! Did not land far enough forward on the trampoline. Was not able to land the barrel. And Crimson Gulch, way better than our first three competitors, but he is out on the baby dragon. And this takes us to number five, Weekend Halo, but with a three. And another first jump failure. Wow, first jump's not supposed to be that hard. And unfortunately, our next group of competitors also struggled with the first obstacle. First, we had Killer G, failed to jump from one to two. As did, oh no, first wiener. That is a real gamer tag. He uh, missed the jump from two to three. J69DN, again, another real gamer tag. He failed to jump from one to two. And then Z mixed with X and 4273, uh, fails to jump from one to two. Guarded Kitten joins the club of first jump failure. Uh, oh wow, this is a lot of runs. Lion, 2021, wow, he failed first jump. Very looks a good, oh my goodness, he landed the first one and walked off. That is just embarrassing. Uh, this is a very long, what, how are so many people failing the first obstacle? Okay, Baseless Crib, he had some potential. He was moving very nice and then miss the fifth step in a bit of a heartbreaker. But that puts him in second place so far. Uh, Fred Burr also missed the first jump. Apollyon misses the jump from one to two. Things are really going well in this first obstacle, huh? Uh, 15 competitors have gone, and only one has beaten it. In fact, we've tied the record for most fails on a single obstacle already, and Stelsar gives us the 15th fail of the step pillar. We've already set a new record for most fails on an obstacle, and we're like 5% of the tournament. And, but Foles, as I'm talking about it, smoothly makes the fifth step, and Foles brings the end of the drought, and he will now attempt the booby trap. Oh my goodness! I thought he was done there. Okay, now he is. He got like a super low bounce, and again, he didn't wait for me or anything. He just took off. Uh, Fireproof Gamer, that wasn't very good, but... <laughs> Yeah, impressive run there by Fools. I didn't really get to talk about it, but, uh, hey, he's one of two people to beat the first obstacle so far. And now we have Glitch G Sucks, uh, better known as K H, I think was his gamer tag. Um, he's a relatively new actual jumper to the scene. Oh dear, that is not the debut performance he was hoping for. Now we have NBK XX Pernig XX. And he is moving with speed through the steps. Oh, I thought he overjumped the pole, but he is through. And now, he... Oh, nope. He took two bounces on that first one. That's the other way to do this obstacle, but it becomes very technical if you go for that technique. And Karnik could not pull it off. Dark Spartan 227 barely made that second step. And comes up short of the third. The jumps get progressively harder. I was worried for him after he barely made that second step. Now, Bull RCR. Why are so many people failing the first jump? I don't get it. Alright, now, believe it or not, we are already to the final newcomer of the tournament. This is Tails Sucks 39101. He has competed on a few other courses, finally getting his moment of glory here on Irish Warrior. Um, was not feeling too confident about this uh, this course, especially this first obstacle. Um, and he's seen so many people fail it. I kind of don't blame him. Here goes Tail Sucks. Looks like he is just going to have some fun with this run and just see how far he gets. Uh, if it's just him being a troll or just him trying to soak up as much green time as he can. Uh, this is interchangeable, but he's made it to the fourth step. This guy actually has some talent. Uh, believe it or not, from what I've seen, oh, you just showed it there, a great save jump on that fifth step, and now going for the pole, 
Another safe jump. Oh, he's going for more spins. Come on, tail sucks. Took him almost 40 seconds, but he beats the first obstacle. Now going for the booby trap. Looking okay so far, and then just completely stalled his momentum on the third set. And just couldn't keep moving forward. And how does this guy keep coming back? The Chief is back for his fourth appearance. He's been a rando every tournament. I've never invited this guy. This guy just keeps showing up. It is phenomenal. And he's actually done better than most people so far. He's made the third step. Lining up here, going for the fourth. The Chief! Back down on the first obstacle. Unfortunate, but better than most people so far. So nothing to really be ashamed of. And now it's foamy. We'll get us halfway through the tournament already. Yes, it's only been like... 10 minutes, but oh well. Foamy has definitely not done very well in this course. Five previous appearances, never made it past the third obstacle. He's taking these steps one at a time. Definitely slower, and these jumps get very difficult at the end. Foamy gets that fifth step. He's just got the pole and the dismount, and Foamy beats the first obstacle, going for the booby trap now. And oh, he's a little low on the third one. He's going to Get his momentum going forward, but it's too much side to side, and he's unable to get to the fourth set of bouncers. And Foamy is out on the second obstacle, and he is now 0 for 6 on getting by the third obstacle on Irish Warrior in his career. But now we have a Valsa Samurai. He has not been here since Tournament 8. Uh, he failed the lily pads in that tournament. And now he took three tournaments away from the course, and now he's back. <laughs> Virtually everything is different. But he just vaulted through that first obstacle. Now the booby trap has caused some problems. And he hits the front of that second bouncer. It stalls your momentum. Makes it much more difficult to keep moving to the end. And the Vows the Samurai just learned that the hard way he is down. And now Woolly Waspert. This is our uh, pro spring jumper from Tournament 8 as well. Um, he was the guy that got disqualified on the Rail Canyon for spring jumping on the windows themselves, or on the top of the window, I should say. Uh, but this guy's definitely got some talent. Uh, obviously for him being able to spring jump, he must know something about jumping. And he's moving quickly and getting huge bounces on the booby trap, and he is just the second person to reach the Diamondback today. Wooly Waspers showing some form here. He gets that second diamond. Now this harder jump to the third one. Wooly Waspers just slides right off. He jumps too high. Couldn't quite land that final diamond. Unfortunate. But now we have Demigods. And he's been a little bit of a mixed bag. Had a great run in Tournament 7 and 10 for uh, what people expected from him. Going down in the Real Canyon. Last time, though, it was the Crescent Bowl that took him out. Now Demi on this new era three stage one he's on the third step here of the step pillar taking him slow and demi bounces off the fourth one and demi unfortunately down on the first obstacle this first obstacle is causing a bunch of problems and demi just becomes another victim of it <clears throat> ah so unfortunate but we move on to go tanks making his Landmark 10th appearance here on Irish Warrior. Only missed two tournaments. Gotenks has really been across the board. He's never been, you know, a standout competitor like he is on Halo Ninja Warrior. Um, but we'll see what happens today. He's taken those last few steps slow, but getting through nicely. And now for the booby trap. Gotenks keeping his momentum up beautifully. A little low there on that four set of bouncers, but he is through and onto the Diamondback. Gotenks has never attempted this obstacle. He uh, was one obstacle short of it in the last tournament. He filled the crest bowl in the last tournament. I think I might have said that already, but oh well. He's going for the third diamond. Wooly Waspers couldn't get it, but he will. And now, just the dismount. And he will be just the second competitor to face the baby dragon today. Crimson Gold couldn't get onto it. Gotenks. He can get onto it. Great jump. And now this roll. It will pick up speed as you go, so you really got to keep yourself under control here. Gotenks way to the front, but he is hanging in there. It rolled so slow for him, 
and Gotenks is the first competitor to defeat the Baby Dragon. Now he'll have to attempt a Donut Dash. And he is just going down the one side. This is kind of the recommended technique. It's a bit of a full send technique and he gets through going for the pipe fall. Go tanks! Oh, I thought he landed the pole, but he just slipped backwards. Go tanks! A great performance here. He almost came unstuck here on the booby trap, just hanging on there on that fourth set of bouncers. And then the baby dragon. Only seen one competitor attempt it before him. Go tanks! Able to land that barrel control the speed. This pipe fall, you need a perfect jump. It is a 50-foot jump. It is a max sprint jump, and you almost have to nudge forward when you land on it. Go Tanks maybe jumped a little bit early, was not quite able to cover the full distance to land the pole. But still a great run for Go Tanks. Really one of the best runs we've seen from him in a long time. And now... It's time for Wolf Ninja 1225, another competitor we have not seen in a long time. Last time we saw him was Tournament 7, in which it was the debut tournament of the Crescent Roll, and he, uh, he failed it. Wolf Ninja, not really, uh, oh, just barely getting through the steps there. Wolf Ninja has kind of picked two bad tournaments to make his first two appearances in. Uh, tournament 7 only had three clears, and with how things are going so far, this stage one might be as hard as that, but he is smoothly through the first two obstacles. And now for the Diamondback, he's never tried this before. This obstacle replaced the Crescent Roll back in Tournament 10 in the sixth position. And Wolf Ninja goes down on it. Just went a little bit too high and slid all the way down. Unfortunate, but we move on to Snaz with a crowd of characters. I believe that is... Go tanks. It's either Go tanks or Z Master. Uh, Demigods in Weapon Mat here to choose him on. Six appearances on the course. He has not really done too well in the last two tournaments, but Snaz moving quickly here through the first obstacle, but he misses the fifth step. Snaz is down on the step pillar. He was going for speed, but he just jumped too far to the right, the highest point of the step makes it much more difficult to land and Snaz unfortunately down on the first obstacle. Oh man, this first obstacle is a nightmare so far. Uh, let's hope Drew TV can get us back on track. He missed the last tournament, but in tournament 10 put up a great performance getting all the way to the slider jump. Drew TV will stop on that fourth step. He was going fast there for the first few. Just barely makes that fifth step. Was able to make uh, the jump that Snaz couldn't there. And now going right for the booby trap. And that is the way to do it right there. Keep your speed up. He's kind of struggling a little bit getting that dismount, but he does get there. Now for Diamondback, he beat this in Tournament 10. He was the first competitor to ever defeat this obstacle. But where are you going, Drew? Drew jumps a mile to the right, was not even close to landing it, and he is down on the Diamondback today. This takes us on to Tricky Cyrus, making just his seventh appearance. Uh, obviously, he didn't do very well in Tournament 2. He was the only person, or he was the first person to fail before the fourth obstacle in Irish Warrior history, and then came back in Tournament 6, and really, Tournaments 6 through 8 put up great runs, Last few times he's been here, though, not doing as well. He lands that fifth step, going for the pole, and through. He missed the last tournament, and so obviously a lot of changes here. My goodness, Tricky Cyrus. He almost got that weird, crazy, like, double jump thing. I think Bully Waspers got early. But he just watched his pal, Drew TV, fail this, jump to the second diamond. He will get a save jump. Now, the third diamond, he will land it. Tricky Cyrus taking some time here at the top, getting that difficult dismount, and he is through. Uh, struggling with the stair there, that's okay. Tricky Cyrus now going for the baby dragon jump. Beautiful jump, did not even need to crouch there. And now, he's got about a minute left as it rolls down there. He's the speed, but Tricky Cyrus just about hanging in there. Thought he might have won a little early on the dismount, but he is okay. Donut Dash 
He is just staying to one side. He used the other side compared to Gotenks, and he is now onto the pipe ball. Tricky Cyrus. Oh, no! He gets rejected by the pole. He lands on the left wedge. That is a disqualification. Those wedges are there to guide the pole forward, and unfortunately, um, you're not allowed to land on those, and Tricky Cyrus is out. Let's see what happened here. Tricky Cyrus, he almost gets too late of a jump. He gets great distance, but not the height necessary to land on top of the pole. It's such a big jump. Tricky Cyrus, it's a good run. Getting to that point. No one's made it past that jump yet. But unfortunately, that's the end of Tricky Cyrus' day. As we move on to Daddy Cheese, we saw his girlfriend run at number one. And now Cheese making his 11th appearance. He's made 11 consecutive appearances. He only missed the first tournament when I really didn't talk to Cheese that much. But now, uh, you know, we, we hung out in NNL about a month ago. So, you know, that was cool. So Cheese, one of the few Irish Warrior competitors that I have met in real life, and by that I mean two. Hi, hi Philip, if you're watching. Jeez, oh my goodness! What in the world? He skipped the fourth bouncer! He gets a double jump on the third bouncer and skips the fourth bouncer entirely. I have no idea how he did that, but that was super cool. And Cheese going right for the dismount of the Diamondback, and he just makes it. And now Cheese got to line himself up here for the Baby Dragon. It's a big jump. And he gets a safe jump and lands it. And now time for the roll. He's trying to face forward here. A little wobbly and he falls off the front of the barrel. Jeez, that was a super entertaining run. But it comes to an end on the baby dragon. And now, Bubba Ace making his 12th appearance today. First of uh, nine competitors who have a perfect attendance record on this course. Bubba Ace taking his time here on an obstacle that he's kind of responsible for, the Step Pillar. This was a staple on Ninja Warrior Roblox, his own show. He just makes that fifth step, going for the pillar, and Bubba Ace is through it. And now, taking his time here before the booby trap, and he's going for two bounces on each set. That didn't work for him. Bubba Ace kind of had to stall his momentum on that second set of bouncers, and unfortunately, Bubba Ace has a personal worst today going down on the booby trap. But we move on to Super Ninja Jake 2. He was number one in the last tournament and put up a very solid performance, getting all the way to the Rail Canyon. Um, for relative unknown going into the last tournament, he was actually very impressive. And of course, as we know, he beat stage one of Halo Ninja Warrior 23. He's got some definite potential as he is speeding through the booby trap. Avoids the mistakes that Bubba made before him. Now, I actually misspoke in the last tournament. Super Ninja Jake actually is British. So there were four Brits that failed the Rail Canyon in the last tournament. Super Ninja Jake uh, being one of them. I didn't know he was British until, like, this tournament. So, oops, sorry about that. But he... Oh my goodness, he almost came up short of the final jump on the Diamondback, but he gets there. Almost went right into the Baby Dragon, but he thought otherwise. Smart decision with this pretty lenient time limit. He's moving at a great pace so far, but now he's got to roll down. And he gets a save jump. And no! Oh! He almost was going to fall off to the side. You can't touch the support or the ball. And you almost wonder if he thought otherwise about getting a second save jump because of that. And that is it for Super Ninja Jake today. But we move from one Brit to another. This is Stray Helix. He also failed the Rail Canyon last time. He has been on quite a losing streak. After clearing stage one in three of his first four appearances, he has now failed stage one five appearances in a row. He's had pretty good results in all of them, but he's not been able to hit the buzzer in any of the Era 2 tournaments. Maybe Era 3 will provide some success for him as he is quickly through the first three obstacles going right into the Baby Dragon. Strafe, not the cleanest jump, but he lands that barrel. And now he's seen two competitors fail this ride down. It is not as easy as it seems. But Strafe is hanging in there, getting three wrangle jumps, and he gets through, going right for the Donut Dash. Again, you see how they tilt on different axes. 
and Strafe gets through, and he's got a minute left, plenty of time, way faster than our first couple competitors to get here. Strafe lands the first pole, going for the second pole, and Strafe is the first competitor to defeat the Pike Vault. And now for the escape wall, he didn't get to attempt this last tournament, and he is not up in one, but he has plenty of time. Like I said, this time one's lenient, but I'm not sure how lenient. He misses his third attempt here at the wall. Strafe is burning a lot of the time that he had built up. He misses a fourth attempt. It's getting a little desperate here, but he still should be good if he can get up here. And he does. 30 seconds left. He's got one obstacle to go. This is it. The swivel swing. He built this obstacle in tournament nine. But now, this is the end of the stage. If he beats this obstacle, he is on to stage two. There's no mountain cross after this. Strafe. He failed this dismount in Tournament 9. Can he get it today? 10 seconds left. Strafe goes for it. And he misses it. Strafe Helix misses the final jump of the stage. He had time in hand. He just couldn't get the momentum to get all the way to the platform. And Strafe Helix, he showed our competitors the way to do the pipe vault, getting that beautiful late sprint jump and just bumping forward just a little bit to land on that first pole. We won't show all five attempts on the escape wall, but you have to wonder if it made him rush this dismount just a little bit. Let's see what went wrong here. Strafe was looking good, but I oh, he jumps just a little bit late. As you can see, it's swinging around, and he didn't use the pole. He had jumped about there. He was money, but instead he jumps about a second too late and didn't use the pole to build his momentum. And Stray Helix defeated in Deep Stage 1 yet again. But now we move on to number 38, Z Master. Uh, he is making his third appearance today. And uh, there was Snaz and Demi, and I think that's Atlantic in the background. Uh, it was uh, Z, I guess, and Snaz is in throw, so uh, I beg your pardon on that. Um, but Z moving quickly here through the steps. Uh, bit of a bad omen for Z. Both tournaments he has competed in, he has failed a trampoline obstacle. So Z hoping to uh, avenge his phobia of trampolines. That's kind of a trampoline obstacle to booby trap. He gets through it. Now Z. Going for the diamond back, and Z gets a save jump, but he can't stick the second diamond, and Z is another shocking victim of the diamond back. This obstacle is not taking any prisoners today. And now it's time for Sonic Fan 10193, Mr. Mountain Cross, uh, for all the wrong reasons. But uh, obviously, every tournament in the era one that he competed, he failed that obstacle. He is 0 for 9 on stage 1, but he is determined to somehow break that today. Quickly through the first obstacle, gets that big jump off the second bouncer on the booby trap, and he's quickly through. He, he kept joking and calling that obstacle the pinball alley, but it's, it's not. It's a booby trap. He failed this obstacle here, the Diamondback in Tournament 10, beat it last time, and he will beat it again. He will now have a positive record on, this, on that obstacle, but he's never attempted this. The Baby Dragon... Sonic fan lands the barrel, and now he's got to ride down. Gotta keep a good rhythm here. He is rolling very methodically. Don't go too far forward. It's rolling up the incline, and Sonic gets the dismount. Now for these donuts. He is using the right side, staying to one side and gets through. And now for the pipe vault. A little bit slower than straight, but he's still got plenty of time. Sonic fan lands the first pipe. Oh, I thought he came up short there. But he lands the second pole, and he is now onto the escape wall. He is taking his time to set up for this. Sonic gets up in one. 40 seconds left. Sonic does not have to contend with the mountain cross today. It's the swivel swing. This is it. Sonic has never beaten stage one, and he's looking good. But Sonic... Whoa, he jumped way off to the right there and was able to pull back. 25 seconds left. The time is not even a fact. It's just a matter of making this jump. Sonic Fan gets it! And Sonic Fan on his 10th appearance on Irish Warrior. He has finally done it. Some people thought it might never happen at this rate. 
Sonic fan proves all the doubters wrong, and he is the first competitor through Stage 1 today. Just a fantastic performance, cleared with plenty of time left, too. Didn't go at the fastest pace, but you don't need to on this stage. He's able to make all these jumps. Tight Vault was a little scary. He jumps really early here, going for the second one, and just barely clings on. Sonic was able to get through that. Get up the escape wall in one. Get onto the storm swing. It looked dangerous here. He was drifting right. Just landed that second pole. From there, the celebration was on once he made this dismount. Let's go! Let's go! Yeah! Wow! Hang on. Yeah! Out of every course you could have gotten your first gear on, this should not have been. Wow! That was incredible. Sorry about the uh, echoes there. Uh, that was from my uh, old computer recording, and uh, it had some issues here, and it's last few weeks here of recording audio, but Sonic Fan is through stage one! I can't believe I'm saying that! And now we move on to number 40, our final day run, this is Cobra. Failed the mountain cross in each of his first two appearances, a little bit of a step back last tournament failing the Rail Canyon, but this guy is so talented. One of the most naturally talented jumpers I think I have ever seen. This guy, still in his infancy of jumping, but man is he good, and he is quickly through the first two obstacles. Now for the Diamondback. First one, yep, makes that first transfer. He's gonna go to the right here for the second one. He slides way down! Cobra just barely survives! And gets the dismount, Cobra is through that. Going for the Baby Dragon, he failed the trampoline obstacle last tournament, but he gets on the barrel. He actually failed the inside of the Rio Canyon last time. Now he's gotta figure out this roll, and he's actually punching the barrel I think he's actually slowing this down. This is a very interesting technique. And now he's going to get a wrangle and get the dismount. Cobra. Went a little bit slow there, but he is still on a good pace as he is moving quickly down the left side of the donuts and through that obstacle. Now for the pipe vault. Goes for the jump onto the first pipe and he comes up short. Is not able to crouch in time. This obstacle is causing some problems. It's not easy, like I keep saying. Cobra looks like he just didn't get the distance outward to land the pipe. Just need to go a little bit more forward, and he could have had it. Well, 40 runs in, and we do have a clear from Sonic Fan. 10 runs left to go. It's time to turn on the lights and see what our final 10 have to offer. All beginning with this man, number 41, Fireball CFC. Uh, oh, he's making a little smiley face. How nice of him. Hopefully he'll be happy at the end of this stage because he'll hit the buzzer, which is something that he has not been able to do in the last three tournaments. A rare occurrence here for Fireball to have failed stage one three times in a row on any course. That's the case here today. But Fireball, our first ever finalist here on Irish Warrior, Doing so in Tournament 3, hoping to return to form here. And punch his ticket back to the second stage as he has quickly moved through the step pillar. Now for Booby Trap. This obstacle's not a guarantee. Whoa! He somehow got a jump on the third one and stayed to the right side. He didn't switch over like you're supposed to. That was very interesting. But Fireball moving quickly through these Diamondback. Uh, the Diamondback, and he is through. Now, moving rapidly into the baby dragon, and he lands the barrel. And look at this, he's actually doing the same thing that Cobra did, he is punching the barrel. He's gonna try and slow it down here. Fireball rolling down, he's on the edge there, what's he doing? Fireball, he punches his support! Fireball, another sloppy mistake, and he is down on the baby dragon! Fireball fails stage one for the fourth tournament in a row. Things have really gone south here for Fireball in recent tournaments on this course. Fireball landed the barrel beautifully, but as we watch this again, he's trying to punch to slow the barrel down, but he's actually moving backwards as it's, it's like the punches were shifting him closer and closer to the edge. And he just didn't realize where he was. And then it was just too late. He tried to save himself. And then he just came off. 
And even if he had got back on the barrel, he would have been disqualified there. Fireball out in a stunner here. Now we have the host of Spartan Sasuke. This is RPG 445. Rock, um, even though he's only beaten stage one three times, he has a pretty good track record of getting pretty far into stage one. Uh, he is tied with Sonic Fan for the most Mountain Cross failures on this course with four. Thankfully, the Mountain Cross is no more, so we'll see if he can A, get that far, and B, uh, well, get to the soil swing and then get through that. The new last obstacle. Uh, nothing too crazy there on the booby trap, and now Rog making his way across the diamond back here. Didn't have a whole lot of confidence for this stage one, but so far, so good. And now the baby dragon has caused a few issues so far. You just watched Fireball fail it. Okay, gets on the barrel. Now this tricky roll down. Rog staying to the side, standing up. That is very risky, but he is able to control the speed and Rog gets through, and now the Donut Dash. And he's going for a different technique here. He is going side to side. He is switching sides on each Donut, but it doesn't affect him. Rog gets through, just like everyone that has gotten to that obstacle so far. Took a second here to line up. Oh, what in the world? He just lagged super hard. He took a second to line up there before the pipe fault. I thought he came up short, but thankfully it was just lag. And Rog now onto the escape wall. He was able to get up this relatively unscathed last turn, but he has just failed his first two attempts at it. And a third. Rog is running out of chances here. He needs to get up it here. Come on, Rog. Yes! He is up 24 seconds. It's not. Yeah, ooh, this is gonna be close. 20 seconds left. Rog gotta pivot around. He gets a great push there on that first swing. Great push on the second swing. He is making up some time. It's all going to come down to this jump. Come on, get there. Yes, he can. Rock clears. 5.55 seconds left on the clock. And for the first time since tournament eight, Rock is back into stage two. And it was a fine run. It wasn't the flashiest. It wasn't the prettiest. But Rog is through and on to stage two. And now, getting a very long run up from the starting platform, uh, the spectator platform, I guess, is El Booker Taco. Changed his name from Booker Taco. He finally broke through and beat stage one in the last tournament. Let's see if he can follow it up today. And he is moving. A little bit of a weird jump off that fourth bouncer there on the booby trap. But he is through and now going right for the Diamondback. First one good, second one. He bounces off the side, and another top competitor goes down on the Diamondback. Booker Taco, a personal worst for him today. That is unfortunate. Oh, man. But the car is wearing number 44. Uh, really one of our most consistent competitors as far as stage one. He had beaten stage one eight times on this course. Now hoping to uh, get through yet again. I beg your pardon, he has only beaten stage one seven times. He has failed stage one four times. Tournaments one, four, seven, and eleven. Last tournament he went down on the swivel swing just like how he did in tournament seven. Obviously the swivel swing is still here, so we'll see how Chumpy is able to handle this new stage one. He has a lot of support, obviously, as you saw from the intro from a bunch of different people. And he gets a big jump and another big jump. It's like our competitors are getting like double jumps there on certain bouncers, and they're making it work. Chumpy has seen some competitors go down on this obstacle, though. He's been bold on this in the past. He's going for it again, and he gets the quick dismount. Chumpy going right into the baby dragon. Chumpy comes up short of the barrel. Not able to bridge the gap between the trampoline and the barrel of the baby dragon. And Chumpy, for the first time in his career, has consecutive stage one failures. He just lands too far back on the trampoline. I guess it's a little bit of hindsight, but you have to wonder if he would have stopped there before going for the trampoline. I think he could have had a great chance of beating that obstacle. 
but instead it, it is a shocker there for Chumpy as we move on to Hunter Unit 751. Hunter making his 12th appearance today, hoping to become just the second competitor in Irish Warrior history to have 10 Stage 1 clears. He's only failed Stage 1 twice in Tournament 6 and 7. Of course, Tournament 6 was the first renewal. We'll see how Hunter does today in the second renewal as he is moving quickly through the step pillar. And the cream, cream of the crop here is getting through that obstacle with no real issues. Now the booby trap, he is going to bounce himself side to side here and get through. Hunter never wanted to go super fast and this time limit is pretty lenient so he's going to have some time to uh, stop and focus here if he needs it. He is pretty quickly through the diamond back and now the bait dragon. He just is doing exactly what I said, he's taking some time lining up, going for the jump and he lands the barrel. And now the roll down as it will pick up speed. He is staying crouched. He gets a wrangle. Rolling down a second wrangle. And Hunter falls off the back. Hunter unit is down on the baby dragon. And the baby dragon is just eating people alive. Hunter unit, it's a personal worst for him. He got the jump onto the barrel. And the ride down was where it all went wrong. This is a little bit different than the other rolling obstacle we've had on this course we past the slider jump. And that unlike that, the barrel actually picks up speed as you go. And it just appears that he wasn't prepared for the barrel to be moving so fast. He just leans too far back and the barrel just rejects him right off into the water. A shocker for Hunter Unit 751. Now only five competitors left to go here on stage one. First of them is Smokey Massacre. Smokey has really come into his own lately here. He now has seven consecutive stage one clears. One of just two people to beat stage one in every tournament of era two. Obviously, I think we know who the other one is because uh, you know it's the guy that's beaten stage one every tournament. And he's a great champion. But Smokey, great jumper in his own right. Many total victories on a bunch of different courses. Smokey more than capable of doing it on this course. First things first, though, getting through stage one yet again. First two obstacles were no real issues for him. The Diamondback has been tough today, but he is getting through it no problem. And now the baby dragon, he has seen some heavyweights fail this obstacle, but he lands it. Now the roll. This, um, th you really aren't clear on this obstacle until you get to that platform. Nothing easy about it, but Smokey stays in control. And onto the donut dash. He is using the right side, keeping his momentum moving forward, and gets to the platform. A minute left for the pipe fall. Gotta get this big jump. He lands the first pole. Falling forward, going for the second one. And Smokey gets it. And now 49 seconds. Going for the escape ball. Not up in one. He kind of struggled with this obstacle a little bit last time. Needed a few attempts. Going for the second attempt. And he gets it there. 39 seconds. That should be plenty of time here for Smokey Massacre. As he gets the trampoline jump onto the swivel swing, he's getting incredible punches yet again. Here we go. Smokey has gotten really good at this obstacle in recent tournaments. And it is showing here once again. As long as he gets the dismount, he does. Smokey Master with a fantastic time. 21 seconds remaining. The fastest time so far. And Smokey Master keeps his streak rolling. That is eight in a row. Back to tournament five, of course, the time weapon mat won for the first time. And Smokey will be on to stage two as we now have Flamasaurus with this new theme song because he plays rock and roll in all of his videos, so we gave him some rock and roll there. Flame actually made it to stage three in the last tournament, which is how he earned his theme song. Uh, a big breakthrough run for Flame. I don't think a whole lot of people saw it coming. 
Flame is really good on a bunch of courses as he's getting some weird bounces here in the booby trap. He almost came up short of the dismount, but just hanging in there. But Flame, he's had his battles with stage two, as has pretty much every competitor on this course. But Flame was actually able to get through stage two in the fastest time in the last turn. And uh, unfortunately, he went down on the precision pyramid. But Flame, wearing the number 47, gets onto the baby dragon. Now, time for the roll. Oh, he almost fell off the back there. He is all over the place. Flame, and what in the world? Holy cow, how did he make that? He is having some close calls here, but he is pushing through. And doesn't have any issues on the donut dash either. Going right for the pipe ball. Lands the first one as it falls forward. He goes to the second one and gets through and now setting up here for the escape wall and he is up in one very impressive 41 seconds left as flame gets the bounce onto the soul swing now the difficult thing about the trampoline is you can't really shoot the swings when you want it becomes a little bit more difficult to time and he is running into that here as you see it is not pivoted around like he would like so he's now gonna have to force the swing around but he still has plenty of time. Looks like he's gonna use it here to set up this jump. You don't wanna blow it here. Flame, still, with time in hand, gets the dismount and gets the buzzer. And Flame becomes our fourth competitor to be stage one today. A rare occurrence yet again. Flame beats the collapse. It wasn't super pretty. As we saw here, this dismount almost gets a false bounce somehow able to cling onto the platform. That didn't make him nervous. I'm sure this baby dragon did. He was all over the barrel and was somehow able to stay up on top of it and get through that obstacle. And took his time here. It's a great veteran awareness to know that you have time and hand. Set it up and gets the big dismount through the swivel swing and back to stage two for the sixth time. Third in a row for Flame. Very impressive work for uh, the the Donkey, I guess. He always says that in his videos. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if he has a nickname or not. But now we'll just ignore that. Let's go on to Joey Davis. Faze. He changed his gamer tag in the last tournament. He really had come into his own lately. First seven tournaments were horrible for him. Failed stage one in every single one of them. Finally got into stage two in tournament eight and now has made it to stage three in three consecutive tournaments. Joey now eyeing five consecutive stage one clears and he is bouncing quickly through the booby trap. The amazing thing is, is that in each of the last four tournaments, Joey's not only cleared stage one, but he's done so in the fastest time. And with the pace he's on so far, he might be going for it yet again. Again, you just want to clear. Doesn't matter how much time you have, as long as you hit the buzzer. Joey gets a great jump there onto the barrel of the baby dragon. And now rolling his way down, he'll get a wrangle, a second wrangle, and gets the good dismount. 70 seconds left. Joey going for the donut dash. And through that nicely right into the pipe vault. This is tricky. He lands the first one, riding it way down, but he's able to get the distance and land the second pole. And up the escape wall in one. He has an eternity. He might be able to take a nap and still beat this stage, but I, I wouldn't recommend that. Joey is so good at this swivel swing. He is the fastest competitor, bar none at it, and he is showing why he is so fast here yet again, Joey. Climax for one of the fastest times we've ever seen 32.55 seconds left. Uh, yeah, we let straight through the buzzer there because uh, straight standing on top of the buzzer didn't let the buzzer respawn. Uh, we're gonna show this again. I have no idea why this is now a thing in modern jumping where competitors get in the way of other competitors finishing the stage. We had uh, Smokey, Weapon Warrior, in Tournament 1, and then in just the last tournament, we had the infamous. Fireball standing behind the buzzer, 
deal that cost the booker like three or four seconds as well. Um, today it is great standing on top of the buzzer. Uh, did not want the minor as well. But other than that, Joey Davis with the third fastest ever stage one clear time and the new fastest stage one clear time. Uh, that is a tournament six. So very impressive there, and now he is back at the start line. Chumpy, dead Sonic, and a dead plane. To root on his pal from his Brillo Fam 4. We haven't really talked about him much yet, but Petrillo Fam really just an incredible run in the last tournament. The last two tournaments have been nothing short of phenomenal. Went down on the Wobble Coaster in tournament 10, finishing first place. Last tournament, getting all the way to the final, becoming one of just three competitors to ever reach the final stage on this course. And while he came up short, he was able to channel that into a total victory on Flames course very soon after that. We know Petrillo is hungry to just, you know, it sounds crazy to even say, but Pedro says he always hunts for a final in any tournament he does. Pedro lands the barrel on the baby dragon and now he'll have to roll his way down he is getting a bunch of jumps here this is like the super duper cowboy wrangle four jumps and all but he is through it and now donuts he's keeping his speed up nicely and gets through that pipefall he lands the first pipe it's falling forward goes to the second one he gets there, no crouch or nothing required. Going right into the escape wall, and he is not up in one. Trillo not up on his second attempt either. And he doesn't really get a boost there on the third attempt. He starts way up on the wall and still gets up. I haven't really seen that technique work before, but Petrillo gets up on his fourth attempt, and he still has time in hand. 30 seconds left. As he jumps, he went right to left there, going for the second swing. He's staying on the left side here on this third swing. Just the dismount left. Petrillo gets to the buzzer. 18.82 with four wall attempts. That is a super impressive run. We kind of made fun of Petrillo for being relatively slow on this course. But he was a speed demon in that run. 18 seconds left. Four wall attempts, he could have been right there with Joey as far as time remaining if he got up in one. But this uh, super dangerous technique here on the baby dragon, getting four wrangle jumps in a row, that is not easy to do. But Trillo was able to pull it off. And fourth attempt here on the escape wall wasn't exactly urgent that he got up. He probably could have had one or two more attempts after that. He was able to get up with a very short run up. From there, Petrillo smoothly through the swivel swing. Petrillo back into stage two yet again. And now, one competitor left to go Weapon Ball. Last tournament was nothing short of breathtaking, achieving his second total victory on this course. Obviously, it, it, it's it's hard to even fathom at this point the dominance that Weapon Man has over this course. And, of course, he has 11 consecutive Stage 1 clears. This renewal course is a lot of new stuff. We'll see if Matt can pull it off today as the Grand Champion, the two-time Grand Champion, moving quickly through the step pillar as if there was any doubt there. And now, getting some weird bounces here in the booby trap, but he is through that. Now the Diamondback, he has beaten this obstacle in each of the last two tournaments. Uh, he beat it last tournament in route to total victory. He is just staying on that right side, getting that third diamond, going quickly for the dismount. And Matt, making his way up, going for the baby dragon. Matt! No, my goodness! Matt is down on the baby dragon and the streak is over! The two-time grand champion! He achieves his second total victory in just the last tournament and he comes unstuck on the fourth obstacle! Holy... Holy smokes! I don't believe it! Matt! I, 
he gets kind of a weird jump here. I think he almost cuts his momentum just a little bit. I think he was worried about overshooting the trampoline. He gets the height necessary to land the barrel, but not quite the distance. I think if he had gotten a crouch in time, he probably lands the barrel there. But Matt was practicing not really needing a crouch there. And I cannot believe it. For the first time in Irish Warrior history, Weapon Matt is down on the first stage. For the first time ever, we will have a stage two without the best competitor on this course. And it goes to show that it can happen to anyone. Weapon Matt, undone by the baby dragon. And following that incredible failure by Weapon Matt, we still have to move on from that. We have six. Moving on to stage two, Joey once again getting the fastest time, all the way down to Rog. And there you see the fails 22 step pillar fails, and seven on the baby dragon. Fails definitely spread across the board in the front half of Stage 1. Only 10 competitors beat the Baby Dragon, and 6 of them were able then to hit the buzzer at the end of Stage 1. As we go into the new second stage, this, uh, this uh, stage definitely a little bit different looking. It all begins, unlike in the past with the Mongoose obstacle, you now start with the wind chimes. And while it's unmodified, this very difficult fifth obstacle is now the first obstacle. And then you're into the Salmon Ladder, which debuted in the last tournament. The only buff is the final jump. As you can see, the windows are blocking the sides. You must now go for the far platform, which is a farther jump. From there, it is the Ball Glider. It's been in every tournament, and it is still a difficult task. Roll the two balls down, the first one at a 10 degree angle, the second one at a 15 degree angle, and make the dismount, and then you're on to the new circle twist. There are eight spokes in each uh, circle. You have to just find the best way to get around each one and make the difficult transfers from circle to circle. Make your way then on the dismount platform and prepare yourself for Pandora's box. You have to pick a side jump to that side of the box, jumping to a cliffhanger-esque ledge, landing that ledge, then jumping for the pole, and jumping for the dismount. And then it's a super launch. It's the same as it has been in all of Era 2. Drive your way down and land on that small, eight-foot deep island. And then, there's no minefield. Competitors will then go right into the supermarket. The only modification is that there's a new uh, jump into the supermarket. If our competitors can get through all that in two minutes, they're on to the third stage. It has been so long, spending nearly a year-ish trying to beat the stupid first stage, that in a, especially in a renewal tournament, to finally break through and beat that first stage. I am just exhilarated, <laughs> as you can hear. But I mean... Going into the second stage, I'm, this is certainly not an easy stage two. Probably one, the hardest one I've ever been on myself. I mean, it's not impossible for me to clear, but I wouldn't count on it. So, you know, I'm just here to have a good time, and who knows, maybe I'll be able to pull off something interesting. Alright, well, let me just say that stage one was very tough. I was not expecting to get through it, especially on a renewal, but I managed to pull through. Uh, going into stage two, I feel the same way about it as I did with every other stage two I've attempted in the past. Um, I think it's really tough. I do feel like I have a decent chance of dating through stage two, but there's some tough stuff on here. Those first two obstacles can be really tough. I've never made it through the fourth obstacle. Hopefully I can do it this time. Uh, there's a couple more tough obstacles after that, so it's going to be tough. But, it'd be nice if I could make it to stage 3 for my first time. Beating stage 1 felt really good, that was a tough stage, especially, you know, it's a renewal, so that is to be expected. Um, but, I, I got through it, there were some obstacles I was definitely nervous about, but I'm very happy that I was able to complete it. This stage 2, on the other hand, I am very nervous, I feel like this stage is extremely difficult, I failed it the last couple of tournaments too, you know, like, I struggled with stage 2, as it was, and I don't think it's gotten any easier this tournament. 
Uh, thankfully, the landmines are gone, so there's that, but there's still so many other tough obstacles on this stage. So, I can beat it, but I'm going to have to be on my best jumping behavior, I guess, if I want to get through it. Stage 1, I didn't feel very confident going into it, and by the end, I think that my heart was beating faster than it ever has on any course I've ever been on. But I cleared, and uh, that's what mattered. The stage two, I actually feel fairly confident on this. Like obstacle-wise, I think it's been made uh, a bit easier than the previous tournaments. Uh, but at the same time, I'm definitely not known for being the fastest on this course, and the time limit is uh, not the kindest. So I'm worried about that. But if I can go at a good pace, I think I'll be good. Going into stage two, the obstacle I'm most worried about is definitely the salmon ladder. That final jump is really hard, but the time limit is also very strict. But uh, I do think I can beat the stage. I don't want to make any stupid mistakes going too fast. Uh, no, I think I can get back to stage three, honestly. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, that was the first time in... I've never been that nervous for a stage one run in a while. I know it might not have looked like it, but once I didn't get up the wall my first go, I was really scared at the end there. But I am so happy to be here with Sonic and Joey, too, because it's the first time I think ever that's happened. But, um, yeah, this stage two, I'm 25 times more confident on. The only obstacle I think I can screw up is actually the first one, the wind chimes. But if I can get through that and I beat this stage, you might have a problem on your hands here, Irish, because I'm feeling good about stage three. I might actually beat it. So you know what? Wish me luck, and I'll try my best, like always. Let's get right down into it. Six competitors left to take on the second stage. I'm not going to lie, more than I expected, and I think more than uh, a lot of our competitors were expecting to be at this point. But our competitors really showed up here um, in a bit of a diverse field here at stage two. None more so than this man, Sonic Man 10193, finally into stage two for the first time in his career. He's got two minutes on the clock. Unlike in the past, where stage two was a speed stage, a little bit more uh, technical, this stage, very speed driven. The time limit is super difficult, and Sonic is already wasting a ton of time on the wind chimes. Gets through, but he almost just lost 20 seconds there. Sonic, now he's missing spring jumps. He's getting away with them a little bit. You definitely risk jumping into the next zone and having the next bar spawn and then you're off. But uh, Sonic, able to finally find his rhythm, but he is well down on time from where you want to be. You want to be through the ball glider with about a minute left at the very least. And I think Sonic is gonna be behind that pace, but this is his first time attempting the ball glider. He gets the transfer onto the second ball. 65 seconds left as it now Ventures down the second track, 15 degree track, not easy. Sonic fan goes to the dismount and gets there, but 56 seconds left, he is behind the pace. Circle twist though, you can make up some time, but he's not moving super fast, but he's getting onto the second circle. Making his way across. Now to jump onto the third. Sonic comes up short. Wasn't quite able to get the height. He kind of jumped more out than up. The jumps from circle to circle get progressively tougher. That jump really one of the tougher jumps on that obstacle. And uh, that is the end of Sonic's day, but a big day for him. Obviously a personal best. And uh, a run that hopefully he can find some confidence uh, from going forward. And now it's time for RPG 445. Uh, the incredible statistic here with Rog is that this is his fourth time here in Stage 2. Every time Rog has been here, Patrillo Fam has also been here. Rog, first time ever attempting the wind chimes. Of course, this was the fifth obstacle of all of Era 2. Rog never got to attempt this obstacle. He failed one obstacle short of it in Tournament 8. But he gets through it uh, a little bit faster than Sonic. Not super fast, but still pretty good. You want to beat those wind chimes in no more than about 15 seconds. I think he took a little bit over that, but he is moving quickly here up the salmon ladder. Gets the dismount, and he is through the first two obstacles in 30 seconds. I think he's already about 10 seconds up on Sonic. Good pace so far here for Rog. Now this ball glider, this is tricky. 
Rog going for the transfer gets onto the second ball. Now 15 degree track. He is very familiar with these because of course the infamous rolling jump. I talk about this a lot with him. No wrangle required. Rog gets the dismount and he's now onto the circle twist. He judged watch Sonic fail this. He's skipping right for the end of the first circle. Was not going to use three pegs. He was just going to use two pegs on that first circle. And he over jumped it. And Rog is out on the circle twist. Two up, two down for that obstacle. And now it's time for Smoky Massacre. Uh, apologies again for the robot interview. But uh, as we heard, Smokey not feeling super confident in this stage. And he doesn't have a great track record on this stage. He's only one for eight on the second stage here on Irish Warrior. He's hoping to change that here today. As he's now off here onto the wind chimes. And oh my goodness, Smokey! Smokey misses the third wind chime. He had never failed this obstacle before. And Smokey becomes the first competitor to ever fail the first obstacle stage two. Obviously, this obstacle much tougher than the other first obstacles of stage two, but he was going for a speed technique and he just got pushed to the side there by the pole of the second chime and was not able to build up the sprint that he needed to get onto the third pole. And just like that, we are down to three competitors and it's time for Flamasaurus. He failed these wind chimes in tournament eight, but he beat this stage in the last tournament. Flame speeding through. He went for basically the same technique as Smokey there, and he beat that obstacle in about 10 or 11 seconds. Super bold to go for the same technique as Smokey right after Smokey screwed it up. And now he is springing the salmon ladder. He missed a spring on that first rung. Missed another spring, but he is still okay. Gets that bigger jump there at the end. And even faster than Rog gets onto the ball glider. Flame failed this obstacle in tournament two, but he's beaten it every other time he has gotten to this stage. This will be five in a row if he can get it here as he goes to the transfer and gets it. Now the 15 degree track. He is hanging in there. So far, so good. Losing a little bit of time here, but he is okay and he is through onto the circle twist. Flame. Oh my goodness, he misses the jump onto it. Flame. Just. I have no idea what just happened, but he is the third victim of the circle twist. Like I had said earlier, super bold to just stay to one side and go right for the wind chimes. Stops on that fourth chime, but gets quickly off of it. Just a textbook wind chime performance. But man, he went for the circle twist. I think he tries to jump into the wall to stop himself, and instead of hitting the wall, and, and it's stopping himself. It almost pushes him to the side of the pole. And in just a flash, Flame will not be returning to stage three today. He is down on the circle twist. And just two competitors remain as it's time for Joey Davis. He is obviously very good at stage two on this course. While most people struggle with the stage, Joey is three of four on it. This is the only obstacle he's ever failed on this stage. The wind chimes in tournament eight, his first time here. But Joey is making his way through. So far, he gets the fourth chime. That's the one he failed back in tournament eight. It took him about 15 seconds there. That was a pretty good pace. Now, Salmon Ladder. He is not going to spring these. He's just going to get the vertical jumps. That is the way mere mortals like me do this obstacle. But he is actually making his way up this pretty good. Didn't lose a whole lot of time there. That was well done. Pushes the ball forward to get ready to go here on the ball glider. Charlie moving nicely. Going for the transfer. Gets that. No problem. And he's struggling a little bit to get this second ball going. He's losing a couple seconds here. But, oh my goodness, he's racing down the track now. And he gets a big wrangle and gets through the obstacle. And now he's onto the circle twist. He's going right for the far spoke there. That's about as far as you can go mounting that obstacle. But he's moving through nice. This is the jump Sonic failed, but he gets it. Joey making up great time there. And he's the first competitor to beat the circle twist onto Pandora's box. Using that left side, he sticks the ledge, goes for the pole, gets off of it. 42 seconds left. 
Joey now has the super launch. He's never struggled with this obstacle, but it is still difficult. Can he land it? Yes, he can. And now he gets to bypass the minefield no more. It is now just the supermarket, and he has time in hand. 25 seconds left. It is looking good here for Joey, unless he does something crazy. Joey is going to make it four stage threes in a row. The man who failed stage one seven times in a row to begin his career is now just a man on a mission on this course. Joey Davis with 8.36 seconds left. He moved super fast through that whole stage. This time limit is no joke. And Joey was able to just be super efficient on everything. He didn't really go over anything super reckless. Great pace, the circle twist, not only a, a technical obstacle, but an obstacle you can lose some time on. He's seen three competitors fail it, but it's not getting in his head. And first man to ever attempt the Pandora's box, he's able to stick that ledge very quickly. Breeze right through that very challenging obstacle. There's super launch. It's never a guarantee. We've seen top competitors fail this obstacle in the past. Joey Davis would not be denied, though. Today, he hit the island, got right through the supermarket. And we'll see Joey Davis make his fourth appearance on the stage three. Just a little bit. And now the question is, can his good pal Patrillo Fan 4 join him? Uh, Patrillo did join him here in uh, the last two tournaments, both the last two tournaments, 10 and 11. Uh, Joey made it to stage three, and Petrullo also made it to stage three. So can we now get three tournaments in a row of Joey and Petrullo both making stage three? It's time to find out. Petrullo beat stage two last time in one of the most incredible runs we've ever seen on this course. He went quickly there across the second one, struggling a little bit to stick this third one. Petrillo going quickly for the fourth, quickly for the dismount of pretty fast wind chimes. Not as fast as he normally does it, but very well done. Petrillo beat this stage in the last tournament with only two hundredths of a second left. The closest finish we've ever had on this course. He's hoping to finish with a little bit more time left this time. And uh, was the fastest salmon ladder I've ever seen, but he is up. And now 82 seconds as he's rolling down here on the ball glider. Being it under control, going for the transfer, and he gets it. Pedro has struggled with this obstacle in the past. He's two for four on it. He's hoping to get on the right side of the coin here. He is keeping it under great control. He speeds it up to get the dismount, and he is there. 63 seconds left. And now the circle twist. And he is going for some frog jumps, it looks like. And he is going very fast. He's making a lot of jumps here, but he's making them with speed. He gets a save jump there on the third circle, and Petrillo gets through that obstacle. And he is now going for the right side of Pandora's box, just like Joey, but a mirror image, sticking that ledge with a save jump. And now 36 seconds left. He's on to the super launch. Oh, he almost overran the goose there. That could have been interesting. Burned a couple seconds. Can he land the island? Yes, he can. 24 seconds left. It should be home free. He got through this obstacle in about 20 seconds last time. But just got to keep moving here. Four walls left to go. These are the harder walls here at the end. 10 seconds left for two final walls. And Petrillo will make it a turkey here. Three in a row. He is back to stage three as well. He has Sonic and Joey to celebrate with him. 3.9 seconds remaining. And just think, Joey tried to kill Petrillo there, and he, he couldn't even do that. Petrillo was just unstoppable, I guess you could say. Very solid performance. Wasn't the fastest, but he was able to pull through. And we will see him and Joey attempt the new third stage. But we did see four fails on this stage. Smokey going down on the wind chimes. Rog. Flame and Sonic all failing the circle twist. And now it's time for the new third stage. While this stage is shorter in length, shorter in duration to complete this stage, it doesn't make it any easier. In fact, this is arguably one of the hardest stage threes we've ever seen really on any course. 
and it all begins with the discus throw. Debuted in Tournament 10 and took out Joey in that tournament. Joey just absolutely loves that obstacle. And then you're on to the Precision Pyramid, the last of three obstacles that have been in every tournament behind the Ball Glider and the Supermarket. We saw Flame fail that in the last turn. Speaking of the last tournament, we saw this obstacle debut. The Doorknob Grasper debuted in the fifth position. It has now been bumped forward to the third position, and the Doorknobs have been made even smaller. You have less room to land. And then from there, you're on to the Beast, the Cliffhanger to end all cliffhangers. This is the Giga Cliffhanger. You start with a big lateral jump. Then a high jump there up to the third ledge to get yourself in position for this long jump to a small fourth ledge. And then after one high jump, you have the, a very, very challenging jump here. This is a corner wrap jump where you have to control your arc and your distance to just absolute perfection. You have a little bit more room to land there with the wider ledge, but from there you have two lateral jumps. They get progressively bigger. Then two high jumps to small ledges that get progressively bigger. Then this big drop down, not easy. A very large crazy jump. And then you have to do a second corner wrap. This one is to the other side. Same dimensions, you now have to jump the other way around. And if you're somehow able to get through the 13 ledges from hell, you still have three obstacles to go before you can call yourself an Irish Warrior finalist. Beginning with this new beast, the Castle Wall. While it looks like the wall climb from the past, competitors only have small pegs to jump across, and every jump is a perfect crouch, 12 feet in height. Super challenging obstacle. And from there, you make your way through the little hole, and then you're onto the pipe bombs. Five pipe bombs, you have to jump your way around and across. It's super difficult that late in the stage to make those technical jumps and you're onto the green bar safety before attempting the flying bar this obstacle like the salmon ladder only one bar will be there at a time you have to jump your way across the five cradles and then you get yourself in position to then go and make the final dismount and if you can land on that final platform you are going to be climbing for total victory I'm glad I beat stage 2 again, but as you know, in tournament 10, I failed the first obstacle, which I'm going to do that again today, because it's really difficult, and then I'm going to be depressed after I failed it, pull a puma, and retire, so all I have to say, this stage 3, and the first obstacle, so, yeah, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the greatest God. interview ever. Yeah, it's, all, it's always nice to clear stage two, but uh, having, uh, of course, having all my friends here is cool. And to be honest with you, I feel pretty good about this stage three. I honestly feel I can beat this. Even Cliffhanger, it, it seems very doable for me. And none of the other obstacles, I think, are too, too difficult for me. So there's a very realistic chance if I get by that Cliffhanger, I can get to the final. Well, here we go. Two competitors left to take on the new third stage. Some some old things, some new beasts that our competitors will have to get through. First man to go, Joey Davis, now taking on his favorite obstacle in the whole wide world yet again. He hates this obstacle. He failed it in 10, beat it in 11. Joey, going for the fifth discus, gets a save jump, lands that fifth one and gets through the obstacle. Of course, we just heard him cuss this obstacle out, but Joey's still able to pull through when it matters most and get through it. Now, Joey, of course, last tournament when he beat the discus throw, he then failed the cliff roller. The cliff roller no longer on stage three. He did beat this obstacle though, the, the precision pyramid. His pal Flame in the background failed this obstacle. It is not easy. 25 feet in distance. You have to cross here between each pole. He's made all the upward ones. Now going back down. He's getting the frog jumps and getting a weapon mat spin. Unfortunately, weapon mat now can't say anything about it because uh, weapon mat didn't make stage three this tournament, which is unfortunate. Joey Davis, though, taking on the doorknob grasper for his first time. He is going for this speed technique. We saw our two competitors in the last tournament go for this. 
This obstacle has been made harder, but you wouldn't know it by watching Joey very smoothly through the doorknob grasper. Now he will shoot at Flame and Sonic. He'll get ready to take on the cliffhanger. Camera angle change because we had to wait for them, uh, Flame and Sonic, to get back around to the other side to watch this cliffhanger attempt. Joey gets the second ledge. Now I'm going to go for a running technique here. He was going for it in practice. My goodness, he misses the third ledge. Joey, I did not really expect anyone to fail that ledge, but every jump on this stage is difficult. And Joey Davis is the first victim of the new Giga Cliffhanger. He got through the discus throw. He makes his first jump here, but he was going to try and connect this jump here. He was going to go right to the third ledge, connect it, go right for the fourth, keeping his sprint intact. But unfortunately, he just jumps too early here and doesn't get the height. It's a tricky technique to pull off and not really worth it. A bit of a bummer there for Joey to go down on the cliffhanger. Still, the discus throw is a any day in which Joey beats the discus throw is a good day in his book. And now, here we are. 50 competitors began this tournament, and now just Petrillo fam remains. He beat this stage in the last tournament, made it all the way to the Wobble Coaster in Tournament 10, this stage three, much more difficult. First things first, discus throw. He beat this obstacle in each of the last two tournaments, and he landed that super smooth, barely needing a save jump. Petrillo, quickly, oh my goodness, he almost missed the first pole of the precision pyramid. Petrillo beat this obstacle in each of the last two tournaments as well. He is moving through quickly. He is also going for some frog jumps on the downward section, and he is through that. And going right into the doorknob grasper. He is connecting these as well. He beat this in the last tournament. Petrillo moving with urgency. And he's through that. And he is already onto the gig. You wouldn't even know who this is. You'd think this was Fireball doing stage room. How fast he's moving. Petrillo lands the third ledge. That is a first place for Petrillo. Going for the downward ledge. He sticks it. Great save jump. Going up for the fifth ledge. He's there. Now, first corner wrap. Can he get his arc correct? Petrillo goes for it. No, he comes up short. And just like that, tournament 12 is over. Petrillo fam was feeling pretty good about this stage. But this cliffhanger is something else. It is way more difficult than any cliffhanger that has come before it on this course. Just a absolute monster. He was able to make the jump. Joey failed. Make that small downward ledge. That jump is not easy at all, but Pedro made it look that way. But then this corner jump here, you gotta get your angle just right. Petrillo here just didn't jump far enough out. You have to kind of jump away from the wall. The difficult thing about that jump is you don't really have a wall to support yourself against. You gotta kind of jump and at an angle, you have to jump out and bring yourself back in. And unfortunately, Petrillo stays too close to the wall and he kind of gets bumped there by the support wall of the second side of the cliffhanger, going for that sixth ledge. And a great tournament for Petrillo, but he is undone there. 50 competitors stepped up to this new renewal course. And while we saw some incredible performances, no one able to get to the final today. Great job by Joey and Petrillo getting to Stage 3. Further shout out to Sonic Fan and his first time beating Stage 1, getting a third place finish. But that will do it for uh, me today. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you starting on October 4th for Tournament 13 of Irish Warrior.